everyone. I'm here with Lauren, my friend from Purdue, and she's doing amazing things. We're here at our farm today in mm -hmm. Indiana, and she's going to load a truck for charity. And Lauren, why don't you tell them about the charity of your choice today that you're going to load this truck on behalf of? Um, I love the Children's Miracle Networks. I've been working with them for a while. I do a lot of fitness and power-up coach with them to help raise money. Um, I, what I love about them is they raise money to help the families and the kids with their surgeries and their medical bills. So it's, you know, a charity after my own heart and I'm so happy that I'm going to be able to do this to help them. Well, it's fantastic. I hope it brings more awareness to your passion for their cause. And right now we're going to go transition into where we teach you how to drive a truck. Have you driven a truck before? Yes, I have, but wow. not one as big as this. Okay. So I'm a little nervous, but I'm really excited. Is this the one that we're driving? This is the one we're going to start with. Okay, perfect. All right. Let's do this. just a little too hard but that's okay let's go all right how do I do this Baby 
footsteps on the on the farm. It's doing good. Perfect. Just go straight. Just go straight. Perfect turn. Look at that. Amazing. What? Just go over the hump like yep, this. Yeah. Just go straight. Keep her straight. So I don't want to hit him. Am I going in the right area? No, just make sure you're like, just try to keep it like straight. What I do usually, because we're going to go down that, just keep this center thing right in the center of the... Is it center? What? So... here with my guest, Lauren Sesselman, who is a Purdue alumnus just like myself. That's where we met. We had the Purdue mm -hmm. connection, which uh, seems to keep giving back yes. more and more as time goes on. And here today on our farm to do the Load Up for Charity event, where Lauren has come in all the way from Green Bay, driving what, five <laughs> or six hours? Seven. Oh, seven hours. Seven hours. Oh, my goodness. From the frozen tundra. Oh, my goodness. To, it's okay, though. To drive a truck. Yes, and having some fun. We are having some fun. We had a good lunch, had a nice conversation, and... This was our chef. I was a chef. did a great today. job. You Made some salmon and some veggies. I mean, right. who gets lunch like that? <laughs> Lucky girl. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. You know, I want Lauren to tell you more about her story because she really is the definition of, in many ways, an entrepreneur, an athlete. Uh, you know, she's done amazing things in soccer and in business. Thank you. And as time goes on, you know, keeps reinventing herself in essence. And you're getting ready to move out to Los Angeles yes. this week and start a new, a new chapter a new chapter in life out there. So why don't you just take a moment to tell everybody. Kind of who I am, what I do. What yeah. Do well, thank you for that thank lovely you. intro. Um, as he said, my name is Lauren Sesselman. I am from the land of beer and cheese, Green Bay, Wisconsin. I'm so sorry, Indiana Colts people. No, I'm just kidding, I love the Colts too. Peyton Manning was my man back in the day until he went to Denver, but that's okay. <laughs> that's another story. But um, who I am, yes, I went to Purdue. Um, had a great five years there. Um, <laughs> and I am actually a professional soccer player, um, Olympic medalist, which is kind of my little claim to fame and been kind of like the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, so yeah, I went to Purdue and then I um, was drafted out of college and I've been playing professionally for the last, gosh, eight, nine years. It makes me sound really old. Um, but yeah, and you know, soccer has just been kind of like a stepping stone for me and it's just kind of taught me so much in life, you know, like on and off the field, it's just kind of molded me into um, the individual that I am and it's taught me so many things. and. Um, it's kind of led to some other things and some other passions, you know, off the field. So besides playing soccer, um, I have my own fitness company, um, which I kind of started a couple years ago. And for me, that kind of just came about because I've always just wanted to help people. That's just something, you know, I've always wanted to do. And, you know, as a soccer player, we're role models, you know, we're inspiring the future generations every day. And that's something that I love and I take to heart and, um, just finding different ways to give back. And so um, being, you know, a fitness person is just something that's been so fun for me and, and helping other uh, achieve their, their health dreams and goals. And, you know, um, 
it's not an easy task starting a, like a fitness journey. Um, I've helped some people and I've had some great stories that, you know, people have told me about helping them out. And um, gosh, what else do I do? I do so many things. And then I have a, a soccer camp or academy um, that I do worldwide. And that's near and dear to my heart as well. And that's, you know, just really growing these future generations, as I said, both on and off the field, because soccer has taught me teamwork. Um, it has taught me um, inspiration and has taught me confidence um, to believe in myself, which is, which is a huge thing for our, our younger generation um, and society in general to have confidence in themselves and the things that they do. Um, so that's something I'm very passionate about is, you know, giving back to the youth, um, you know, the inner city kids as well, doing mm -hmm. camps for them and helping them, you know, help them with their future as well. It's something I'm, I love doing. And um, yeah, so that's just a little bit about me. And then I'm very involved in um, the communities I'm in. I've been traveling the world like pretty much my whole life. So I try to get involved wherever I am. Um, I've been involved with the Children's Miracle Networks for a while. I'm one of their power up coaches, so they do like a um, miracle challenge um, a couple times a year. Mm -hmm. So I get to help people with their, their fitness, their fitness journey. And we raise money to help um, the kids and their families with their medical bills, um, which is something that, you know, a lot of other hospitals don't do. And I think it's great for these kids. Um, so it was a really eye opening experience for me when I first experienced it and got to meet a lot of the kids and they just warmed my heart and now just helping them out in any capacity that I can, and and that's why I want to do, you know, that's this right. as well. That's right. That's what kind of brought us together. Yeah. I invited Lauren down. Uh, she had a bit of extra time between your travel schedule. Yeah. And uh, you didn't tell them the whole story, though. What about Los Angeles? What's happening there? Oh, and I am <laughs> finally going to move <laughs> out of the old parents' house. <laughs> They're like so ready to kick me out. Um, yeah, I'm moving to LA this next week to kind of start a new chapter. Um, so we'll see kind of where, where it, it ha what happens there, I guess. It's kind of a, just a new, new thing for me. Um, we're doing a, a TV show some, about sports and stuff like that. So you can follow along and see kind of what happens and what that turns into, because I can't really talk about too much quite yet. But, um, and then going out there to coach and to also play again, because like, I can't get rid of soccer. It's just in my heart. So, I mean, what part of soccer do you feel like can you attribute to your passion for business, passion for TV? Yeah. Because it's really about a stepping stone, mm -hmm. essentially. It's not just, you know, as we were talking earlier over lunch, soccer just doesn't stop in one moment. Yeah. Kind of, there's a transition. And, I mean, so what... Well, I mean, I think like the essence of, you know, just team sports or just sports in general just teaches you so much discipline. Um, it teaches you to have passion and desire and, you know, just like any other type of thing that people do. But, you know, sports just was my thing and it just kind of shaped me and molded me and kept me out of trouble. Um, it just gave me something to believe in. And I'm very honored to have been able to, you know, have it be a part of my life and be able to give, share that with other people as well. And um, it's taught me so much teamwork, you know, as I, as I stated before, is like a huge thing, especially starting a business and stuff mm -hmm. like that, making mm -hmm. businesses grow, you know, starting your own <laughs> confidence. Um, you know, it's crazy how people just like when, you know, aren't very confident and sports can bring that out of you. I've, I've been working with some younger children and, you know, they come up to me and what they say to me and it's just like, mm -hmm you know, how can I come out of my shell more? How can I do this? And I show them a few things and then they're more confident in the ball and they're more confident off the field. Um, and it's just like, just sports is just the environment, the people you're around, you're always meeting people, you're always learning new things. And I think that all translates into owning a business, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. as well. You have to have that passion, that desire, that heart, that discipline, you know, to, to have a business. So I think soccer has taught me all those things and it's taught me to, to kind of be myself and to just to believe in myself and no matter you know no idea is stupid you know everyone has ideas and comes in there so everyone has their own creative yep. energy yep. so I think that's something that's really important sports is you know fortunate enough for me to have that and your path in soccer hasn't been just a walk in the park no. there's been a lot of adversity yeah I mean how, how do you feel like that adversity which you have overcome in many situations mm -hmm. and time and time again yeah. has put you in the position now as you 
you know, you're still playing soccer, but mm -hmm. obviously getting towards the end of your career, most yeah. likely. Unfortunately, it's sad. <laughs> it's part of it, though, you know? It's part of it. I mean, how do you feel like that whole experience through soccer has given you a work ethic to yeah. out, outperform anybody who tries to compete against you? Because that's really what it boils down to with entrepreneurship. Yep. It's how much heart, how much passion do you want to put towards an idea or a business? Yep. And, you know, working with the team. So many dimensions that you've experienced firsthand through the injuries, through yeah. losses, through heartbreaks, along the, that road. Yeah, I mean, sports and you know entrepreneurship go hand in hand. It's the ups and downs, the highs and lows, but in the end, it, it makes you who you are as a person and it makes you better off, you know? If I wouldn't have had those lows, I don't think I would be the person I am, you know, going through a major knee injury and just the stuff that people had to say about that. Right. Oh, you're never going to be the same player. Right. Um, you know, you're not that good, blah, 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 blah. Just like everything that people can possibly say to you. I mean, that's what it's like being in that limelight. And that's just something that comes along with the territory. And you just have to have a thick skin and you have to have that in business too. Yep. I mean, if you want to have a business, you, <laughs> I'm learning that too, because I've always been just such a really nice person that you have to have like more of a thicker skin in that. And it's, sports has definitely helped me with that. So it's, it's kind of transferring into that whole business world. Um, so, you know, I like being the boss lady. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's just kind of that never give up mentality it's just like things are going to happen that's just part of it it's part of the sports it's part of entrepreneurship it's part of anything that you do you know mm -hmm. in a daily basis so it's just kind of like how you respond to that and for me how I responded people can say whatever they want to me it doesn't matter I know who I am I know what I bring to the table yep. and I'm extremely proud of everything that I've accomplished and you know that's just people's opinions but if they don't have opinion of anybody, then you're not doing it right, right? So I think it's great when people have something to say because it kind of fuels that fire and it just makes you want it, you know, even more. And it just kind of pushes you even to a higher level. And I don't know, I mean, you've gone through some stuff too. And Absolutely. like, look at where you are. That's, that's part of the process though. And I think when you start off, whether it's playing sports or mm -hmm. starting the company or a new idea, you know, you always think it's going to come right away. You know, yeah. you want that instantaneous gratification for what you're trying mm -hmm. to work towards. And that doesn't happen. No. And from my personal point of view, looking back, I mean, even five years ago, I recall how I was just working so hard. I was putting so much emphasis on the end goal and not the individual milestones. Exactly. And even celebrating those milestones as they come about. And I think as we get older, not mm -hmm. that we're old yet, we've got, so, got a long Still way to go. Still very young. Um, <laughs> I think you, you look back and you realize that it's all about, you know, looking at your vision over the course of time. Yeah. Or the, it doesn't have to be in decades, but it can be, and you know, look at what you're doing, look at the goals and objectives you want to accomplish. And, you know, take it easy, be more calculated, mm -hmm. maybe be more precise in mm -hmm. terms of how you work to accomplish those. Uh, and, you know, follow your passion, surround yourself with good people, I mean, your teammates, your coaches. I mean, you've had the chance to be around some phenomenal mm -hmm. mentors and yep. I mean, maybe talk about some of those. Who are some of the top folks that have mentored you or inspired you? Well, I think a lot of people will recognize Mia Hamm. I think that me growing up, that's somebody that I always like aspired to be mm -hmm. like, you know, um, she's the face of women's soccer. She, she was basically like the person for women's soccer. And, um, you know, I had the opportunity to play against her once and I'm just like, you're just sitting there and you're in awe and you're like, oh, I'm playing against my hero, but I want to be that someday for some little girl or some little boy. And I think that's what kind of fuels the fire as well. But um, and another player that I've got to play with, Christine Sinclair. I mean, I don't know how familiar you are, but she plays for the Canadian national team. Very well-known soccer player, has, you know, accomplished so many things in her career. One of the top players uh, for Canada, in the world, too. I mean, and just seeing what she brings to the table on a daily basis also fuels my fire. And that is what kind of molded me as, you know, you look at this person, oh, she's aspiring. You know, I want to be that. So um, just being surrounded by good, hardworking, great hearted people, that's what I wanted to be. And that's kind of how I molded myself like growing up. And you know, I've obviously was raised by a great family and have great values, which I will always, you know, keep and have with me. But when you are in the sports world, you know, it's just a different world, just the, like the business world is, you know? So. I think having great people around you, just like in the business world, is how you make the engine work.
Sean, give me your like one of your signs, your famous signs.